Ladies and gentlemen, this is the co-main event of the evening in the welterweight division. Scheduled three rounds of five minutes fighting. Out of the blue corner, stands in at 190 centimeters tall, 77 kilograms. Ladies and gentlemen, he's representing Germany, Christoph Torgiersch. His opponent in the red corner stands in at 185 centimeters tall, 77 kilograms from the Netherlands, the Predator, Myrtle Kruna. <laughs> when the referee in this fight is Niels Burskun. So we're about to kick this off. Andy, I think you have a nice little fact about Kirsch for us to just really set up pulses racing. Exactly. Well, Kirsch is actually ex-German middleweight. He served as a sniper in deployed combat in man. So, you know, apart from his impressive fighting record, this guy is a literal warrior. Makes sense. Makes sense. You know, courage is not the absence of fear. You don't need courage if you do not have fear. Of course he's afraid. He's fighting a world champion fighter, but he will fight anyways because of that experience in combat, physical hand-to-hand -hand combat as well as combat combat. It's a wonderful matchup that, uh, that Donovan was able to make in such a short time. This is going to be fascinating to see how it pans out. And we can see here, Robin, that both of them, they seem to be testing each other out, just trying to find, like, find each other's weaknesses, poke, jab, probe. Christoph is, is sort of changing, they call it changing your level, moving the, your center of gravity up and down in such a way to maybe make your man think you're going to wrestle him or grab his leg. But when, against less experienced guys, it actually has less payoff, that up and down movement, because you, they don't react, they don't have as much experience. So it, it doesn't work as well at, at the lower level, but that works. You get in and you try to grab a leg. And this will be interesting. So for everyone watching, this is Grown Hart's MMA debut. So even though I guess we will have some experience clinching and stuff, Robin, this sort of like against the cage work should yeah. be a new thing for him in this environment. The, uh, the game of Muay Thai has a wonderful spider web of complexity of, of, a, of a grappling and a clinching game itself. But instead of a, against a rope, the cage is very different. It, it gives less, there's less give, but that is a smart move. Extract yourself and just separate out into the gap. Yeah, when you are, you know, in this, your pro debut here, the best thing you should surely do is try and stick to what you're comfortable with. Yep. Don't get drawn into a fight. You maybe don't know as much about as your opponent. So pushing to the clinch is something, yeah. So, you know, looking for, for an attack on the neck, no matter how rudimentary, can be valuable. Go in and see what Gronhart knows in this sort of complex game of mixed martial arts. We know what he knows how to do with his fists and elbows on an exit like that. But what does he know? Ah, gorgeous. There's a man who adapted very quickly. That punch to a downed opponent doesn't exist in most forms of kickboxing, but he flowed beautifully into that punch. Yeah, and especially when Gronhart is 35, he spent most of his career in a completely different rule yep. set. That's, a, that's not an easy thing to train in. No, you're right. No, you, you, you know, you move to oh, high kick to the front kick. It seems so far grown heart is starting to grow into the spine a little bit more. Yes, yes, it's just starting to flow into it. You know, how you contextualize it is up to you, but it, it feels like something different. The environment is different. There are different rules, but once he's into it, he's just fighting. And fight is something he knows how to do, both do. So now that we're three minutes into it, this all feels very, very comfortable, I'm sure. Much more comfortable than three minutes ago, standing, looking at each other with all these variables. <laughs> and in an octagon, in a cage, something yeah. that, you know, when you're used to a ring, I, I assume, would you say there's a psychological element in being literally caged in? The unfamiliar is always stressful in life. You know, in anything we do, uh, novel experiences are more difficult to process. Um, but if we see our way through 90 more seconds, it will no longer be novel. You'll be going into a second round of something that you have already done. So, and you know, they still have 80 sec 85 seconds to finish each other and make that irrelevant. And Gronhardt is looking phenomenal right now, as you'd expect. 
Yeah, can you talk us through his ring control at the minute? Because he appears to be marching um, Kirsch around. Yeah, there's little details, things that he's able to do. Uh, Kirsch is not going to just take it, you know? But but Myrtle is able to just flow into these subtle little openings and force Kirsch to turn towards him. So if you imagine that if Myrtle, say, for example, slides slightly to his right, Kirsch will have to reset himself to be in line with it. And Myrtle offsets you over and over in as many different ways as possible. And they found maybe the third clinch of the round so far, and it was Myrtle who instigated it. Interesting move. And a clinch is a clinch. There's no reason you have to start training the way an MMA fighter fights in a clinch. He's clinched his whole life. In the game of Muay Thai, there's all our oh, gorgeous little elbow inside. He's going to find little openings here where he can frame just enough to make enough space to slice with his elbow. So, exactly, on, I believe, the last clinch when he disengaged, he threw a delightful overhand elbow. So, and there we go. There it is again. No, these are all things that he has done in various other forms of combat. This idea, you know, Myrtle is fighting exactly the way that you hope from somebody. Oh, just at the bell. Very, very second So, second round here, Robin. Would probably have to give that first one to Grown Heart, correct? Yep. Yeah, and I think Myrtle not only would have won that round, see, he's starting to show more feints now, kick feints. Uh, you just see the little subtlety in the way he moves his hips. Those are those are offers, threat offers. Um, and Kirsch is also showing a slightly different game, kicking more from the outside. What does Kirsch need to do now to really make his mark on this fight? Because. Yeah, it's not, he's not being blown away at all. Oh. He's, he's, he's standing toe to toe, and he looks like he'll keep on going all fight. But yeah, something I, needs to shift. Yeah, you know, it's a tough one when you're facing somebody this skilled. You you have to beat him with grit, right? What what does Kirsch have that Christoph Kirsch have that Mertel and, and most fighters have faced Mertel? What is his uniqueness? And it is his grit, his toughness, his his combat readiness. So he has to make this fight about those things. So how would you go about doing that? So obviously Myrtle, you can, you can just watch the way he moves. He's so slick, he's evasive, he's hard to get hold of. How do you drag him yeah. down into the kind of grip fight that Kirsch needs? So things he doesn't know, like get a hold of him. Even getting a hold of a wrist, getting a hold of a neck, doing it while protecting yourself, getting to the hips, anything unfamiliar. Right now he's in a, he's doing pretty well in a kickboxing match against one of the great kickboxers in the world in his weight class is Kirsch. Uh, however, what would be even better is make it something else. Make it a grappling contest. Make it a dirty striking uh, fight. That, make it, and there he is, trying to, to get to the thigh. Uh, grapple on the fence, turn his man. Now, Martel's gonna be a little larger because Kristoff would normally fight at a weight lower. When you take a late notice fight, you will be closer to your weight. So Myrtle, in theory, would be a little bigger, a little bit stronger. Maybe he's cut a little more weight. So it's hard to win these exchanges. Now, and again, we'll see if Myrtle disengages with another elbow. That seems to be the really the reason he's happy to uh, get involved in these clinches. And you, you asked what, what he could do, and one of the answers is Kirsch could strike on the exit too. Although Myrtle's the one controlling when the exit happens. On that moment, if Myrtle is thinking offensive, maybe Kirsch thinks offensive as well and elbows himself, throws an elbow himself. And the, the speed of that, the speed of his, his elbow coming over in that disengagement is lightning fast. But Kirsch Ker is standing in there. He's not yeah. looking phased at all. He's not looking outclassed. He is beautiful. Yeah, just the right hand using it to set up the right kick. Yeah, yeah. The, the greatest strength that, that, that Christoph is having right now is his commitment to the fight. If you are against a guy of this caliber and you're not committed, you're not all in, you're not present in this moment, you're going to get finished. He's so present here. He's, he's keeping Martel a little more honest. Robin, can I ask you a question about styles and how they make, make fights? Because, so in Europe, in Bellator and UFC, we don't see a lot of Muay Thai fighters coming in. And we're seeing Kirsch as a traditional mm. Muay Thai fighter. We see it more in one championship. How yes. do the two styles match up against each other? Because Myrtle, you know, he's a traditional Dutch kickboxer. Yeah, the, so... The, 
There were changes to many of the kickboxing rules because the Dutch had such advantages with the knees and the clinch. They had advantages with their gas tanks as the fights went longer. So this, if this now is starting to unfold, oh, and there's, there's Kirsch still keeping him honest, still putting the pressure on him. The, the great Dutch advantage is in all the in-between spaces. They, they improved the game of Muay Thai, or they changed it, they mutated it. But it's not just the skill or the, 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 the style difference, it's the, it's the technical difference. Martel is such a high-level, high-caliber fighter. We see this has been a, a chess match of a standing fight so far, Robin. Yeah, and if you're Kristoff, he didn't just come, you know, hoping to not get finished. He came trying, oh, gorgeous, trying to win the fight. And he's got to find a way to create some porosity in the defenses. And they're looking for an overhand right. But uh, it's it like, picking, yeah. Yeah, it seems like Grown High is starting to link the combinations a little bit more. But Grown High has. Kirsch every time. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, ho, ho, ho. Excellent, excellent response from Kristoff. Mertel pressured him and pushed forward. All right, he's going to look for an inverted triangle perhaps here. That's sort of there. You can actually get that. Yep. Or an arm bar. He can go belly down on this arm bar now. So this must be an unfamiliar situation for Grown Heart. But Certainly less familiar. So he's got the left arm. Very interesting uh, end to that round. The momentum he got at the end of the round, or whether Kirsch can find a little bit more um, equality in this round. One of the keys to why Gronhardt had such a good minute there was he, he committed more deeply, and you're seeing it now. Those first seven, eight, nine minutes were there to sort of create expectation. Train your opponent what to believe you're capable of. And then he, he pushed far past that. So he was penetrating to a particular depth with his punches, and then all of a sudden in that last minute, way deeper, way more committed, way more ferocious. Just that, it's that, that off-speed kind of changing of speed and changing of cadence and changing of rhythm. That's the mark of a martial arts master. A little bit like, uh, you know, to use a North American terminology, like a baseball player's pitch. Yeah. Being able to vary the speed and the strength yep. of those uh, those fastballs. We have to throw a curve or a straight or... A change up. Yeah. They, uh, and it isn't just that the pitch is different. It's you make him guess wrong. So he believes it's a fastball and now it's a change up. Oh, and there it is again. A deeper right hand than he's flashed us through the first two rounds. That hand, that punch is there for him now. He's trained his opponent where to believe he's safe, and he is now unsafe in that place. So an interesting one, I've uh, seen Christoph a few times now move his leg to kind of check these kicks. Is, is he doing it with a technique that really like any kids at home should watch because we've seen MMA just as the leg kicks become king. Is Kirsch the way you say, like lifting that, is that the way? So all he's got time to do is take the weight off, and that's something. Right? Yeah. When you can take the weight off, it, it, it removes some of the impact. Sometimes you can turn your shin out, but it's super dangerous against a guy like Myrtle. He's doing well with these kicks. Now Myrtle's starting to dig into the low kicks, and now he's digging deeper into the right hand. So Mathel Gronhart, there are some fake front kicks too. Mathel Gronhart definitely wants to drop and finish this man, but it's not easy. No, as, we've, uh, as we can see for the whole 12 odd minutes this fight so far, Christoph is a warrior. Yes, he is. There he's deeper. And that's okay. You know what? You don't get the you don't get the single leg, but you pull him down. Oh, oh, oh. So this will be an in yeah. It was gonna be an interesting experiment to see how Gronhart would do with the standing up there and probably in his situation, why is it oh. take a step back? Oh, he has really mixed it up now. Oh. This Kirsch, man, he is really, you know, I almost said fearless. That can't quite be true. Courageous is a better word. But doing exactly what he needs to do to be in this fight with two minutes remaining, and that is stay in his face, take the damage that's coming, especially if you're choosing where the damage goes. We can't take damage to our brains, so we'll offer him our leg. We'll offer him our body. We'll absorb that damage and try to get close enough to hurt him. 
And you can see his leg is definitely damaged. It's his front leg in particular is red and the swelling is starting to rise. But like I said, it's a game of yep. tactics. It's a game of chess. It's about offering the pawn to not take the king. Yes. And, uh, you know, the 28 odd, 29 odd fights he had in 18 months, he's, you know, armored up his body. So, what, you know, one or two of these kicks is done for most of us at home, he's able to handle it. He's changed his own physiology to be able to actually process this. And that makes him unique. It makes him tough. And it makes him in every fight with a minute remaining, he's still in this fight. Yeah, he's he's not being outclassed, and he's just. <laughs> and he's he's laughing now. That's not right, <laughs> guys. That's not right. He's in here with a world champion. You know, a genius of kickboxing, and he's taking 14 minutes of abuse, and he's smiling, and he's having the time of his life. Well, that's what you're right. He looks like he actually is enjoying being there. Yeah. Not a lot of people would be would feel the same oh, in his no. position. No normal person would. But he's in a very interesting cat. The speed of those kicks, Robin. The way Grown Hart just barely winds them up and just yeah. lets them out. Oh, yeah. He's just, he, he, he doesn't throw them. He just expresses them. <laughs> Beautiful. Ooh. We threw that one, though. Yeah. That overhand right. He fired that fastball over the top. So we've got 30 seconds left. Will Grown Hart hunt for the finish, or will he be happy just to... Watch the exit. If there is an exit here, it is going to be a elbow from hell. Elbow. Uh, as he exits here. Oh, is he going for yes. a takedown? Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. Welcome to Mixed Martial Arts, Martel Gronhart. That wasn't even a takedown. You just picked him up and threw him. Well, <laughs> counts as a takedown. Look at this. Oh. But Chris, and there we go. Wow, what a fight from both of these men. Gronhart takes to MMA like a duck to water. So we'll hand you over to Tom right now. Well, ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of five minutes, we've counted the points and we have a winner by unanimous decision. The man in the red corner, Myrtle Grunhardt.